Number one, lecture today. We're going to have a lecture today. Start that uh, operator overloads right from the beginning that we talked. Review. Complete the whole thing, all different types of operator overload. Be done with it. Number two, your due date for your lab, therefore, is tomorrow night for your in lab based on the attendance that you have today. So if you don't have your attendance today, your in lab is going to be zero anyway. But you do the attendance, you have till tomorrow night to finish your in lab. At home, do it yourself. Remain the same thing that it was before. Number three, uh, so that was one and two. Number three, test after the study break, okay? Test is going to be after the study break, but uh, good news is that you're going to have a very big quiz the last week, so kind of a dry run, okay? So I'm going to have a quiz that is worth three quizzes. So we're going to have three quizzes in one day, three ten minutes, okay? Three quizzes on things that I'm going to tell you, kind of a review. Also, during, pardon me? Last, uh, so it's going to be last day before the break. Last day before the break. There are going to be three quizzes on that time, okay? So in the, the day that you're coming in, we're going to have half an hour of quiz, three ten minutes, and then we're going to start the lecture. Number four, there are going to be two review sessions around two hours each during the study break online. I'll send you the link for it. Go on Big Blue Button. I'll tell you how to go on Big Blue Button and everything and log into it and, and have it and, and take part in it. Uh, although it's going to be recorded, but it's going to be four hours of boring review from the beginning to end. From beginning to the time that we had and some more st extra stuff too. Uh, if you don't come during, believe me, you're never going to listen to it after. Yes. It is fully immersive video, audio, slide, desktop sharing, and everything using Big Blue Button. Okay? You will see probably the day before I'm going to have a 15 minute dry run so everybody can try the Big Blue Button thingy and see how it works. Workshops, it's going to be the project, so believe me, that's going to come up. Project is going to come up. You don't worry about the workshop. Project is going to come up. Um, uh, what I wanted to say, so, yeah, also, so for that session, make sure you have a headset, and don't tell me you don't have a headset. If you have a cell phone, you have something that you put your ear, you have a cell phone, and you go, you have a headset. That's your headset. Okay? Put it in your computer, and it works. Okay? You have a microphone. If you don't know, if you don't have a microphone, Dollar Store has one. Go get one. Okay? A microphone. Yeah, if your headset, if you have a laptop, your headset, when you connect it, it picks up the audio from the thing like a, like a cell phone. It doesn't make any difference. If you have a desktop, go get a headset from Dollar Store. They're selling it, I think it's like... Three bucks. It's dollar scope but three bucks. But anyway, so that's your headset. Have a microphone. When you're joining the session, don't just select listen only. I'll kick you out if you're doing listen only. It has to be microphone, which means I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to have voice. You got to, it's got to be fully immersive. I want you to be in class, answer questions. Okay? So when you're coming to class online, mute yourself. So... All the sound around you won't come through it for no reason, okay? When you are talking, unmute yourself and talk, and then mute yourself like uh, uh, ham radio or walkie-talkie, okay? Uh, you don't need to have your a webcam. You could, but you don't need to. I'm going to have a webcam, so say hello to everyone and then turn it off because you're going to see my desktop. I'm going to share my desktop and you're going to see my desktop. Um, um, next thing. I'll tell you exactly what the test is going to be on. Um, before we start the lecture, I have forgotten to mention to tell you an important aspect of C++ that you might, you will need it for your in lab. You might have done it in some way. Uh, but this is the way it's supposed to be done, so I'm going to explain this, okay? When I start lecturing, 
the only thing that you need to do is your attendance. If you, anybody have done attendance? Did it work? Was it okay? All right. So what I wanted to say, when I'm lecturing, I don't want you to look at your monitor. As a matter of fact, it would be nice if you turn it off. Because it's an important lecture. We want to go through all different aspects of operator overloading. But before that, I want to talk about something important about constructors that I forgot to mention. Okay? That, I, that you will need it. So, the question that I am going to ask in the quiz, and I've always asked in quizzes, and again, I want to do it now. I'm going to say, what is the difference between this and this? What is the difference between statement in line 22 and statement in line 23 and 24? They are both creating an integer, and they are both setting that integer to 0. What is the difference between the two? What is the difference between the two? Uh, one is uh, the A is um, using assignment operator. A is using assignment operator. Assignment at the moment of creation is? Now you have to say it. Assignment at the moment of creation is? A? Mm. Constructor. Constructor. What type of a constructor? One argument. One argument, argument constructor, correct? But the other one is an assignment operator. <clears throat> now, this is C++. I asked the exact same students from... Uh, the exact same question from my IPC students, okay? And with respect to IPC, as I would say, statement in line 22 initializes the integer to zero. Statement in line 23 creates an integer. Statement in line 24 sets the integer to zero, which means when A gets created, at no moment of time, there is garbage in it. S at line 22, A gets created with zero in it. How it starts. So A starts its life with the value zero. <clears throat> in line 23 and 24, first we have B with garbage in it. Then we overwrite the garbage with zero. Is that clear for everyone? So when I say something is initialized, what does it mean? It means it gets created with the value of initialization in it. When I say something is being set to something, what does it mean? It had some value in it. That value is now overwritten with something else. Is that clear for everyone? Are we OK with that? Now the thing that I forgot to tell you in constructors that I'm going to mention now. I have a class called package. Package has a value called do not talk in class. Package has a value, has a member value called mData. It has a default constructor, and it has a constructor with one argument. For the default constructor, I'm going package, package, and mData is 0. For the second one, I'm going to go package, package integer data. And in here, I'm going to say m data is set to data. Now, is what, what is a constructor? Constructor is a routine that will be invoked when the object is getting created, correct? So when I create a package, when I create a package in here, so let's actually create a package and see what I mean. Package P1, package P2. Okay?
when I create at line 26, when I create package at line 26, what's going to be the value of M data? Zero, correct? Because it calls the no argument constructor, the default constructor, and the M data becomes zero, correct? Are we okay with this? Why it becomes zero? Because the constructor is called no argument constructor, therefore it sets it to zero. At line, 20, uh, at line 28, when I create a package and I set it to zero, initialize it to zero, uh, initialize it to 100, what happens, the one argument constructor is called and it passes data and M data becomes 100, correct? Now my question is this, we just said that when I put assignment at the moment of creation, it initializes the value to 100. So package is being initialized to 100, correct? My question is this, is M data being initialized to 100 and zero in those two arguments or they are being set to 100 and zero? They are being set, not initialized. What does it mean? It means first M data is going to get created with garbage in it, then when constructor is invoked, it will be overwritten by zero. Do we understand that? Do we understand this? Now, we could change that. There is a place that I call it initialization area. This place is not in a textbook. We don't have such a thing in textbook. I call it this, and I think it's a good name for it. There is an area in constructor, when you're writing a constructor, that area is called initialization area. And anything you put over there is used to initialize member values. Okay? I want M data, I want M data to be 100 at the moment of creation. I can do that. I just have to put it in the initialization area. Where is initialization area? It's a small place right between the name of the constructor and its body, right over here. So if I want to initialize M data to the value that is coming in and not set, what I can do is this. I can put the name of the member variable a column here, M data, not with an assignment, but with a constructor invocation request. Put data in here. So now I'm telling when package is getting created, I want you to initialize M data with the data that is coming in, which means now M data will not have garbage in it at any moment. It will have the value at the moment of creation. If I want it to be zero, what do I do? I go to the initialization area of the no argument constructor and I'll do the same. I forgot to put the column over there. And as you see, the initialization area is within the CPP file, not the header file. It's where you write the, the implementation of your constructor. So if your constructor's job is only to initialize, you have to have an empty body for it and put everything in initialization area. That's very common. If you want your constructor to initialize all its members and not to do any logic, your the implementation of your constructor will have an empty body, an open curly bracket, and immediately a closed curly bracket. And everything will reside in the initialization area. Now, what if my package has a thing in it? What if my package, so in here, I'm going to have a thing, and I'm going to set that thing, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put a default value for thing over here is minus one. I don't know what is a thing. It's just something. So I'm going to say thing. Thing integer value 
and in here I'm going to say m value. Actually, let's initialize that too. m value, <laughs> malloc, that's good. m value set to value. Okay, actually, I'm going to create a default constructor too. I'm going to create a thing over here. I'm not going to create a default constructor. Let's, let's say it can only be created by a value. What does it mean? If I create thing like this, thing, this is going to be an error. You cannot create thing with nothing because you created a constructor and you don't have a no argument constructor. So t, thing, cannot be defaulted. It's impossible. You have to provide a value for it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Now take a look. Let's say my package has a thing. All right? Now, Look, my constructors became just an error. Why? Because if I don't mention how thing is getting created, it's going to get defaulted, correct? How can I initialize that thing to a value? It's an object. It's like your robot and an arm in it. How can you initialize the arm inside the robot at the moment of creation? Can't do. Of course, you probably created it, made it equal to a constructor with an argument passed to it, like everyone else. But that's not the right thing. I want it to get initialized with the value that is in it. How do I do it? I put it in an initialization area. And don't worry, you can put many things in initialization area as long as you separate them with a comma. So in here, I'm going to say m thing. And I'm going to put minus 1. And for this one, let's say I'm going to say m thing. And you can put any logic in here if you want to. Let's say I want to, I want to say if I'm setting a package with data less than 10, I want it to be 0. Otherwise, I want it to be that, the value. So I can say data being less than 0. Uh, um, and then I'm going to say if it's less than 0, put 10 in it. Otherwise, put the data in it. Okay, so I am initializing it using something. Not only that, you can create a, a method if you want to, a private method and call it if you want to. Okay, but now it is initialized. So remember, the space between the closed parentheses of the arguments of the constructor and the open curly bracket of its body, that's the place in which you do your initialization in. If you want any members of your class to get initialized to a value. If you don't want to, who cares? Don't do it. So say for this one, I didn't want data to be initialized because it's just an integer. So who cares, right? So I could have this one over here and not have this one over here. There's, it's absolutely fine. I'm just setting the thing. But remember. In here, you are putting the name of the variable, the instance, not the constructor, not the class name. I'm saying m thing. So essentially, I'm telling to the, cons to the, comp to the compiler, when package is getting created, before you create the package, initialize m thing to this value. So this initialization area happens before the constructor. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Yes. Uh, so in initialization you can initialize uh, any type of variable, like there's no real restrictions to where you can put in there. No. Okay. No, you can you can initialize any value. Now in C in C seventeen and higher, you can actually initialize it right over here, say equal to something. You can do that. Well, we are not doing C17 here. We want you to know this. 
and then know that next semester that you're coming in, say, oh, good, now I can do this, okay? So for now, don't, like those people who come from Java and JavaScript and things like that and C Sharp, they like to do it up there. Don't, okay? For now, use the proper C++ syntax. Are we okay? Yes. Can we initialize it like that? Initialize the width for uh, to a safe empty state, and then inside the body, um, do some logic to see if the passive variables are oh, valid. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Oh, yes, yes. Do your initialization, and then have your logic. Do your initialization, then go through your logic, see if the value is good. If the value is not good, change it to whatever you want. But if the need for initialization exists, then initialize it over there. Don't create, like, do, do not, do not do this. This is a very bad thing. Do not do stuff like this. M thing is set to thing 24. Don't do this. This is an awful thing to do. It means, first you are, see how, I'm going to tell you what happens. If thing had a default constructor, I'll answer your question. First, it would create thing with, it would default thing. Then, it would create another object of type thing. Then, it would copy that one into the property. Then, it would kill that one. See how many things got created and copied and gone through it to be, for this little statement to happen. Don't do this. It's a bad thing. That's why we have the initialization area. Okay? Put it in the initialization area so it gets initialized exactly where it needs to get initialized. So this is very bad. Never do this. All right, so. So I'm going to comment this and say error. Anybody has any question before we start the uh, operator overloading? Okay. You, did you understand what is the difference between initialization and setting? Okay. If you don't feel the need now, just know that at, at any time during your career of programming, you need it to initialize something, that's where you do it. Okay? So if you don't know, why do I need to initialize something? You're fine. As long as you understand, if I need to initialize, where do I do it? There. If I don't need to, for example, if you have, I'm going to talk to you in a second. If you have a reference as a member, if you have a reference as your member variable, Reference to an integer. How can you do it? It's impossible. References must get initialized at the moment of creation. Otherwise, they can't cre you can't create them. So if you have a reference in your member variables, then you have to initialize it over there. Otherwise, it's impossible. OK? So that's that. Yes, sir, I'm coming to you. I think today's going to be full lecture the way I see it. So. Like, I can't see right now because I lost my glasses, but I can roughly see after. I have a suggestion. What if yeah, you move from glasses, you go to the front seat at the very end of the class? <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to make it bigger? No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm asking about the initialization mm. area. Okay. So, so it is between the closed parentheses and open curly bracket of the constructor. Okay. And let's come over there. Yeah. I'm going to have lots of stuff to go through. I have a pair of glasses. You want to try it? <laughs> Are we good? Shall we start? This is something that I forgot to teach. And I forgot to teach in all three sections, believe it or not. So it's very important. Let, let's, rem let's know this, OK? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording right now because I promised to the other class that I'm going to have a separate thing only for this. Um, so I'm going to say stop.